Okay, um, 11, 13 a.m. So this is right after I had that dream up on Cripple Creek. Um, like creepy stuff and images of um, this girl named Jenny Barr. Dylan and Jimi Hendrix playing on stage. Jimmy is a band leader. Dylan working as a side man. They come to the end of the piece and Dylan ends it a bit soon. He's trying to lead, not follow Jimmy. It ends up making the ending sound a bit sloppy, so Jimmy gives up. I'm sorry, not gives up. Jimmy goes up to the amp and begins to initiate a noise jam with feedback, etc. I comment that Dylan ended soon. Jump the gun, I think now. And that both Dylan and Hendrix are better frontmen than sidemen. I don't have a whole lot of comments about this at this point, except that I was looking at the song called American Pie, and Dylan had put out this song that sort of was similar in some ways to American Pie conceptually recently. Something in here about a curtain, like a colored psychedelic cloth curtain. Also, I'm getting the sense that Hendrix, the death of Hendrix was not just somebody offed him, that it was another situation where there were a bunch of people involved or complicit in some way. Sense of Cobain in a Daniel Johnson t-shirt. Daniel Johnson also subject to direct frequency based mind control and probably assassinated. Um, I get two Hebrew letters that look like this. My best guess is that they are um, the equivalent of the letter D, D, D. Not 100% not certain, but that would fit into the pattern here. So what would that mean? 4-4, four, four, um, D, D, because I think it's the fourth letter in the Hebrew alphabet, if it is that letter. Uh, it's a link to the manipulations of women's breasts. It's a link to surveillance, four and four is eight. It's a link to the twins, a doubling of a letter. Um, four is linked to the emperor, so two of them, so twins. Um, and it might be door, door. So in other words, it's a door to get out of the door. In other words, they don't want to let us out you know, of the situation, so their their escape hatch is what it's assassinations. And that's what they did to bread. Why is it Hebrew? Um, my suspicion is part of the reason um, is that there's finance coming right now from Israel. Because uh, there was other things that indicated that. Tiny little tent with bed, like a doll-sized bed. I don't know exactly. The tent keeps coming up again, but when I was, a, I keep ha remembering being in a tent and you know listening to Beatles music on a cassette player with Michelle De Costanzo, like in grade school. With some good memories, you know, we recorded the albums on the cassette tape and listened to them in a tent. Idea of Paul McCartney marrying Linda in part because she could do something for him. Courtney is in a band now. So, um, Linda was Jewish. So they were always saying she was the heir to a, why did they always misrepresent Linda in the olden days as the heir to the um, Kodak? You know, it just, it just would have been so easy to fact check that. It's a question I have. Her last name, not only was she Jewish, but her last name was Epstein, the same as their manager who um, died allegedly of an overdose. I don't think he died of an overdose because he died on August 27th. It was 827. Four and four is eight. Um, and 27 is, you know, the number of the twins. 827 is also the day that I saw the Grateful Dead concert in Seattle in 1983. So I'm, I'm noticing more and more of these dates repeating again and again and again. They're not always the same date, but it's a set, you know, certain dates that repeat over and over and over. Any kind of 27 is significant, but um, 827. So, and the fact that this would come in, like Linda Epstein, Brian Epstein, um, 
Paul McCartney, people call him Maka. The Brits call him Maka. M-A-C-C-A. I don't know if that's like a British thing for McCartney or if it's special for him or what, but um, it looks like there's a, you know, you're going to draw a link. Some people are going to draw a link to the idea of the Maccabees and the Hanukkah story. Maca, Maca bees, right? Maca. Maybe that's what they call Maca. Um, and bees being linked to this family that's, you know, these crimes. Courtney is in the band now. At first I thought Yoko, image of holes on Yoko's arm, all up and down. Now I'm getting the song Lennon, How Do You Sleep, stars in a COVID. Um, stained glass pattern. So there's these stained glass patterns that are now coming up a lot. Um, so links between Courtney and Yoko. What are those links? Maybe also links between the, um, Yoko and the relapse attacks or something to do with, you know, somebody shooting up drugs into their arm. Um, and it sounds like this is a bit of an indictment of Yoko because of the song coming up, How Do You Sleep? Um, so it sort of became more and more clear, because I was, I remember I was yesterday, I don't didn't listen back to the videos I made, but I was really angry about Courtney because I was, I was being assaulted, and I was angry that she's up there in the sky with a drone, conducting assaults, knowing that she's an assassin. And there's no reason for it. There's no beneficial reason for us, for someone like Courtney Love, to be up in the sky, weaponized like that. But what it looks to me like more and more is that she's just financed to do different things, and that she, you know, as, I, as expressed in the song Teenage Whore, that's what she's always done. That's why she showed up in the first place. And it's not her fault. She showed up as a teenager. So when a teenager is being exploited like that, the people you should be looking at is who's exploiting this teenager. Is it their parents? Is it someone else? You know, in this case, I do think it included her parents. Um, in fact, I know it did. I know it included her father. Um, and he is linked to the Grateful Dead. So there's the other Grateful Dead link. I mean, not the other, but another. So the Grateful Dead's getting woven in here pretty heavy. Um, Yoko, ha you know, if you look into Yoko's history, she grew up poor, as far as I can, you know, my understanding, she grew up poor, and then um, because of the war and all this, and then became, it's been a while since I've read it, she's had some kind of link to beef. She's one of those people that's linked to beef finance, or cattle, but anyway, she she became her family became wealthy. Um, Courtney has a song called Twenty Years in Dakota," which she said was about Yoko. But you know, if, not just it's about you know Lennon was shot right outside the Dakota. So. Um, that kind of has a mirror with a, an old hotel in Minneapolis where Erica Schlager used to hang out called the Dakota. Then when my daughter decided to do an internship in Washington, D.C., they put her in an apartment building called the Dakota. It wasn't her choice. They put, she was put there. Uh, and then I talked about how, you know, my family seems to have had some kind of link to the Dakota Wars um, that happened in the 1800s, the Dakota tribe all wrapped up in ribbon, Dylan, Responsibility Engine. I did not, I feel like Responsibility Engine is one of those weird phrases that I should Google because it probably will bring up something I haven't done it yet. All wrapped up in ribbon, Responsibility Engine. It's not like any lyrics or anything that I'm familiar with. Engine, I think, sometimes is used as a, to mean in Native American, right? Engine, engine, it's a joke, right? So, for example, in an episode of Roseanne, she's complaining about um, Dan leaving his engine on the on the lawn, you know, engine, engine. That, you know, there was that was implied in there.
keeps playing different versions of this. So it's ba basically, I say different versions of this. The phone calls waking me, no answer. I don't know what that means. But then I see this image. Is it crops, I ask? It's like an image in a dream I had that I think was linked to um, implants. So this, I think, is linking the implants, the holes, and the crops. So it's like in the wasteland where he asks if the corpse that you buried in the yard has sprouted yet is actually murdering people being seen as growing crops, equivalent to growing crops. So, you know, looking at it that way, all right, I know that 9-11 attacks were part of this. So how do you feel about that, taking down the Twin Towers and everybody in them as a form of harvest? Not, and specifically harvest for Americans. That's what that was. It might have been other things too, but that's partly what it was. Brazil nuts, racist name for Brazil nuts. Okay, so there was a racist name for Brazil nuts that I heard a lot of people saying in the 70s. A really nasty racist name. Okay, what I felt like during this um, series of dreams is this is about Hendrix too. And that... Um, I'm just trying to imagine what these guys, you know, because apparently there were other musicians involved in what happened to Hendrix. I'm just trying to imagine how they saw him, and I, it's, it's hard for me to, hard for me to understand, to say the least. Sneaky duck feet, old-fashioned TV antenna on home. So I'm just getting a vision of these things. So ducks are. Um, doctors. This is about, I think, um, mind control, direct frequency based mind control. And so, you know, that's the thing that you have to keep in mind all the time when you can't understand someone, the way they behave and it seems out of character or it just doesn't make sense. You have to keep in mind the place of direct frequency based mind control. But not just that. How about the TV? What, what kind of messages are coming through the TV just on the shows themselves? Or embedded in the shows, either through subliminal messaging, which does still go on. It might not go on on a corporate level, but it does go on from the from a government level. Um, sound, embedded under sound. Um, known triggers embedded into, you know, programming, all that stuff. I've seen it all, and I'm sure it all went on back then as well, especially if there was an agenda somebody wanted to carry out. Jimi Hendrix would have been a, tar um, a target for um, other reasons. Specifically, his link to my grandfather, possibly. Um, because being linked to my grandfather, you know, makes him, you know, would cause me to pay more attention to him. I mean, that's one reason why that would be significant. Um, and also probably some of the covert communications he was doing. So like the song Red House, for example. Red House, <clears throat> you know, didn't I didn't even run into the movie until a couple years ago, but it became clear that the movie Red House from 1947 was evoking the land around um, where Chris grew up and the land around where I grew up and the whole land grew up on Redmond Road, the Red House on Redmond Road. Redmond, Washington, near Seattle, Redmond Road in Eureka, so forth and so on. The rock quarry behind our house. We had a rock quarry behind our house. I was dreaming about the rock quarry. So there's all kinds of reasons why Jimi Hendrix, had he continued to um, make music and art, could have drawn a little, you know, more and more of a map for me. So that was being kept away, you know, I was being kept away from that on purpose. Um, the smashing of the guitars and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I just felt like, like a crack in my, I mean, that's what, I know that I was being kept away from that on purpose. So I, I, that's why I didn't have cable TV. So I couldn't watch MTV. That's why all these people surrounded me and led me in other directions. 
including Mike Payne. Yeah, I do think that um, elements, if not the entire United States government, was complicit in that. I think it's pretty obvious. Now we get to this fun one. This seems to be where, you know, there's like a transition happening. Um, driving a truck on Hawthorne downhill a bit fast, try to park. Um, it's going faster than I thought. Bump truck in front pretty hard. Let me sit, stop right here. How freaking fast am I going? I came out, I figured this out. January 2014. We're now approaching January 2021, okay? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's been seven effing years. How fast am I going? Not that fast. They need to stop pretending what the, their agenda wasn't to, you know, kill me off and keep this going and keep trafficking children and starting wars and all this other garbage that they're doing. So I don't buy some of this, you know, some of this imagery. I just, I can't get down with, especially the stuff having to do with cars and trucks and buses and all that. Um, bump into a truck in front pretty hard. There's a guy in the parked truck. I say, I'm sorry, I may not have insurance. I was trying to stop in park, in part, because I thought I saw Chris or Chris was near. Um, so this may be an implication here that somebody's bringing harm to Chris and that my stopping will somehow fix that. I don't think that'll fix that at all. I think the only thing that'll fix that is solving this problem. The longer we're here, the worse it's gonna be. We need to get out. He, an older man, and we need, they need to stop telling us to stop because this is obviously an obvious trick that been, they've been doing over and over and over. Okay, these things happened, okay? I'm sorry that these things happened, but they're, you know, the people that have done these things aren't sorry. They got a benefit from it. They might feel a little bad when they get faced with what they did. They've been able to cover up for so long, but hey, you didn't let Bill Cosby cover up his acts forever. Why should everybody else get to cover their acts up? Is it just because Cosby was black? You're going to make him the sacrifice? You know, the next sacrifice. I guess that my attitude is kind of crap right now about this, okay? I'm sorry. I like Jimi Hendrix. I like John Lennon. I like Kurt Cobain. I don't like the fact that they were murdered and that their murders were covered up. And nobody would if they had, a, you know, a decent bone in their body. And I don't like, you know, the fact that a lot of other people were murdered. And I don't like the fact that a lot of people are going to be murdered if this continues. I don't like the fact that people are profiting off of murder and getting away with it. Am I going to go out on a vendetta and murder people who murder, you know, if I had the option to do that? No. I'm not going to murder people. I'm not into that whole, you know, revenge thing, but I do think people need to, you know, be held accountable for, or at least take responsibility or remedy things. I, you know, I never, you know, I never, I never have been that way because I know that, you know, cycles of violence are cycles of violence. And the way to end the cycle of the violence is to stop and is to end the violence. But, um, unfortunately this group does not seem to think like that. They like, they, they profit off the of violence, a lot of them. So anyway, um, we don't see eye to eye on certain things because I don't like violence. At the same time, I don't like to be, you know, taken advantage of and I don't, wouldn't sit down quietly and allow people to commit violence, acts of violence against me and my family and keep my mouth shut about it. That's not okay with me either. Or allow it to happen if I have any other option. Anyway, so, you know, in this dream, I bump into a truck. I don't have insurance. Um, an older man in a white beard says, it's okay, I can fix it. I've got people. And he, what he's meaning, right, the implication is, I've got people not to fix my car, but basically to, you know, murder my way out of this. And the implication that I'm going to be one of his victims. 
um, think about checking to see if there are actually is actually damaged. So this was a situation where the bumper of the car hit the bumper of another car, and they have bumpers like I'll just show you right here. <clears throat> the bumpers are like this car right here. It's not. It's a bumper that you know. Both bumpers hit the other bumper. One bumper hits another bumper. It's not generally going to be a lot of damage. This type of car, you hit the bumper, it might be damaged. That type of car, not so much. So the song then is How Do You Sleep? Um, with an emphasis on the guitar organ solo. So this suggests to me another link to Jimi Hendrix because one of the things that kind of st stood out to me was a quote from Linda McCartney about Jimi Hendrix playing the organ. <sighs> And maybe that's, maybe that's why there was organ. I guess there was organ in that song. Maybe that's why, partly why. Sense that I've got people might be about, you know, obviously something darker than car repair. This seems to, I say, this seems to go on and on and on. This place looked like Eureka, but it was Portland. Kind of like Southeast Burnside, just east of 39th, I write. So that might be some place to look at on the map. Southeast Burnside, just east of 39th. Having a hard time waking up. So I wasn't, yeah, I was really being beamed to sleep. And I think maybe partly because they were going to try to fry my brain the following night, which they, I ended up having to stay awake during the night because I tried to go to sleep and I'd see images of lightning bolts. Like, you better not go to sleep. So um, what's coming through, you know, I get mad because people are doing these things to me, but they're actually just doing their job. The problem is their job. And they get mad. Okay, the people who, who actually support these people up there get mad that I'm getting mad because it's like, why don't you just shut up and die? We're trying to kill you. Shut up. I mean, I feel like that's the messaging that's coming through. Just shut up and die. I hear organ loud on How Do You Sleep morphed into My Beautiful Son. So the song, How Do You Sleep, morphs into My Beautiful Son. I probably tried to fall back asleep, or not tried, but accidentally. I mean, not accidentally, but was forced back to sleep again. I'm getting a sense of red and white flashing now, similar to imagery in earlier dreams. So um, it's not just, the flashing is a, is a warning that there's a dangerous attack going on. Um, and the red and white colors are probably giving some of the origins of the attacks. Um, white car, a new car, Tesla maybe, or maybe a Porsche. I asked my mom why we can't get a car like this. Why are we still driving a car from 1980 or 82, this yellow Ford Mustang with racing stripes? So here's another thing, and then the ending image is this, um, it's like this black matrix hexagrams and all this stuff. I don't know what it is. It's like a floral shaped five sided matrix probably made out of hexagrams. Um, looks like I'm writing cancer center. No, something, something, some note. I don't know. But with regards to this, there's this idea that my mom is justly controlling my life. My mom is not justly controlling my life. My mom is unjustly controlling my life. I am in a dependent position because of the blacklisting. I mean, I am in a dependent position because I was forced into a dependent position. Um, if if anybody had told me the type of control that my mom had behind the scenes at any point in my life, I would have been absolutely horrified, as I am every time I even think about it. Um, this idea that my mom has something to say about whether I live or die is absolutely horrifying to me. My mom is, you know, nobody would... You just don't, you know, really, come on. The woman was groomed from birth to do, similar to Courtney Love. Her job is to fucking take me down. So then they place her in this position where she has the option to do that? And you're supposed to go along with it and think it's fair? Oh, she's her mother. Uh, your mother wouldn't harm her own daughter, you know, like Solomon's, you know, whatever that is. You know, let's pull the child apart and see who wins. You know, but... That's, that's nor you know, you're not taking into account the mind control aspect of this, which means that people act out of normal 
capacity of the way people normally act. Hello. You can't just discount the mind control. You can't. You can't unless you unless you just don't care about being fair and you don't care about justice. Then, you know, I guess you can do whatever the hell you want. But my mom is not mentally, you know, or otherwise in a position where she should have anything to say whatsoever about my life. Nor should anybody else who's been doing illegal surveillance on me, to be honest. That's not how we do things. In part, because I probably have had some negative things to say about the people who've been doing illegal surveillance on me because they also do other nasty things to me. And so, of course, they've heard what I had to say because they're doing illegal surveillance unbeknownst to me for years and years and years and maybe somebody's making stuff up I know I don't even know what's real and what's not real because I don't even know what people are getting exposed to this just every single aspect of this is so ridiculously beyond even comprehension but once again people who are exposed to this all the time are trained to accept this stuff it's like, well, I guess if I'm going to accept this, I'll accept that. I guess if I swallow this, I'll swallow that. I guess I can swallow another thing. You know, and pretty soon it just doesn't even matter what's true, what's real, what's just. None of it matters. It's just you're going along with what you get told. I don't want any, I don't even know what these cars are, but I don't want any stupid car, okay? I don't want the, the people on high granting me the right to live, the right to die. I want my rights that I'm guaranteed under the Constitution. I want the United Nations to support the Human Rights Declaration that they say the support for everybody, including child trafficking victims. All child trafficking victims. And by the way, since we're on the topic of the United Nations, you know, I'm sorry, excuse my, you know, excuse me for not being submissive and humble and, and crawling along on my belly after seven years of this. Um, if you have somebody in your organization who has abused a child, you get you you relieve that person of their duties. Ideally, you actually would hold that person accountable in some way and, you know, make sure they don't have access to any other kids, but if you can't do that, just at the very least, the minimum thing you do is you relieve them of their duties and everybody who supported them, enabled them, covered for them. That's what you do. That's the basics. It's not hard. So I'm treated for my, you know, the fact that I don't want to be murdered, raped, and exploited with extra lightning bolts. Some kind of link to Jonathan Pollard, Israeli spy, and Courtney Love. So why did I, you know, I don't even see because what, where did that dream? There was another dream. It's not even in here. Where'd it go? Okay, <clears throat> this must be this must be a dream that was in the notebook that came before this, so it's a few dreams back. This is the dream where um, I'm in some sort of room with Courtney and two other women. And um, so I'm getting an image right now. It's like the image on Three of Cups, sort of. Three people with cups. And, um, I mean, tarot, Rider Waite tarot, Three of Cups. Um, they're talking about some guy being a good kisser, and I say, good to know. And then I wake up, and there's a new story about this guy, Jonathan Pollard, arriving in Israel and kissing the ground. And I just, I feel ever since I've, you know, made that connection that that's correct, that there's some sort of link between this Israeli spy and Courtney Love and probably finance around attacks that are happening to me. I get the name Radong Chong. So that's um, Tommy Chong's daughter. Now that's very interesting because I looked up Radong Chong and saw that she was in a music video with um, Mick Jagger. And then I looked up the music video. It's like from 1987. Um, and it appears to me, there's probably more going on than I've picked up on quite yet. Um, there's something with a coat in that music video that seems significant. Um, Courtney at one point left a coat in a car that Chris picked up and wore later on stage. It looked like a Columbo coat. But, um, so there's something going on there. The, because Ray Dong Chong is black, um, a person who is black is coded as being somebody who's got a covert, you know, 
covert, this covert, like an undercover person. So Courtney was an undercover person. Um, so Radon Chong, you know, is sort of taking on the role of Courtney, I think, in that music video. I don't remember the name of the song. I can look it up. Radon Chong and Mick Jagger. Um, it wasn't a Rolling Stones song either. I don't think. I think it was Mick Jagger's solo thing. Um, so what I think the basic communication of that was is that Mick Jagger is one of the people behind Courtney Love. And I've had the impression recently that Courtney Love is in some way linked with Miley Cyrus, maybe covertly. Um, so that might be some type of hierarchy, either if not of control, maybe of this weird sort of thing that seems to be going on where people's, some people's patterns from some people's brains are being imprinted on other people's brains. I think that might be going on. So we have a, a hierarchy between Mick Jagger, Courtney Love, and Miley Cyrus, maybe, of some sort. I'm This is speculation. I'm not saying that's going on or it's not going on. I'm not saying Miley, Miley Cyrus is involved in anything problematic. I am saying that Courtney Love and Mick Jagger are involved in po problematic things with regards to me and have been. Um, sorry, I'm just, you know, this is stream of consciousness, and sometimes I take a little bit of an off path. Now I'm turning back. I don't want, really don't want to bring Miley Cyrus into this. Um, so that's the basics of it. Mick Jagger, you know, make, Courtney, you know, used to make moves like Jagger on stage sometimes. So wasn't there a song even called Moves Like Jagger? Um, in the 90s, you know, climbing up on the stage scaffolding and things like that. Okay, 5.20 a.m., take daughter to school, kindergarten, thinking about surveillance, how it works. And I talk with the teacher, offer to help her if she needs something. I'll be around all day. Where is my daughter? So I can't see my daughter anywhere. I see her cousins, Crystal, Jamaica, etc., Shalina. They crowd up around me. So this is similar to the imagery from the dream with Courtney Love and the other two women, they were kind of crowding up around me and hugging me. So this is linking my daughter's cousins with Courtney Love. And my daughter's cousins are linked with Courtney Love already. I talked about the song called Awful, which is in part a message to and about my daughter's cousins. Um, so my daughter's cousins are being used. Used. They crowd up around me. Crystal is super tall, like seven feet tall. This also is another link to another dream, but I don't remember which or who. I say, how did you get so tall? She says, my father? I'm wondering if he's Lakota. Then I remember he's from Warm Springs. They're all friendly. I wake up. Um, I'm sort of half asleep when I hear the phrase, I might go to Parks and Rec. So, it could be about Parks and Recreation, but it's Parks and Rec, like W-R-E-C-K. I might go to the Parks and Rec, maybe. So I think this is to do with assaults, like frequency-based assaults on my body and brain, that Courtney might be actually, you know, assigning to my daughter's cousins because part of the way this mind control Courtney does seem to be really um, versed in the mind control system part part of what um, part of what they do is they find people that are close to you who have family relationships or other types of relationships and get them to cause you harm because they get to add in the, the trauma of betrayal along with the other types of trauma I seem to like to do that. And I don't... Okay, so then I get the phrase, defense spending. And then maybe virtual. I see a car like a white Porsche. And then, then I have a sense of a yellow Volkswagen bug. Maybe this has to do with, um, so I was, like I said, yesterday I was really 
pissed about this fact that, you know, someone like Courtney would be having this kind of level of control and be able to assault us in this way. And they don't want me to, you know, they don't want me to have valid feelings about things like that. And they're going to punish me, even, you know, murder me because I have valid feelings about being exploited, you know, essentially raped and watching people get murdered or be constantly being under threat of murder. Now, I don't know what the hell is going on, to be honest. I know that all of these guys that are involved in this take oaths to defend the Constitution. I know that much. And that's not what this is. This is something else. I see my guitar in a corner on the ground behind some stuff like a baby stroller, etc. I see the number five. a hummingbird singing. More construction. So, corruption. Construction is corruption. Items left for me to find. <clears throat> They're hitting me on the heart right now. Dreams about Brooke's cousins, who I guess have been hired to watch us. Word finance and finance systems. Light shining in, so I'm getting this, it's like a lamp shining. I'm asking Molly slash Adrian what it all means. So interesting that the name Molly and Adrian came up here. Um, Molly's actually <clears throat> with Nathan she was with this guy named Adrian for a very long time up in Seattle. Adrian um, is linked to, or was at one time, linked to Mark Lanigan. They're both, you know, Adrian's the guy from the all-time high band, which seems to have links to Los Angeles or, you know, Paramount or something like that. Okay, as I'm writing Molly slash Adrian, I get the word cancer. So this is, um, and that's, let's see, is that there? No, there's more. John Lennon's song, John Lennon Mother, was coming through, but then when I wrote it down, then I got Pink Floyd Mother. So John Lennon's song is Mother, You Had Me, But I Never Had You. You know, um, basically the same, my situation with my mother. Um, although I have a feeling that he probably even had a closer relationship with his mother. Um, it was just different. His separation from his mother was different than my separation from my mother. My mother was physically present, but not emotionally there for me. Um, and she couldn't have been. I don't, you know, I don't blame her for that, but I do blame her for putting me in physical danger right now. She, I believe she's putting me in physical danger. Um, and as far as Pink Floyd, um, that's Mother, do you think they'll drop the bomb? What's the bomb? Could be any number of things, but, you know, I'm getting the strong sense of there being some issues around 9-11 right now. And maybe even the bomb. I mean... There's really no end to what can be done with this frequency-based technology. Native linked items being refrigeration. So there could be um, a refrigeration antenna being linked to my daughter's cousins. Or it could be a metaphor. You know, refrigeration has something specific that it means. Um, I know that their job initially was just to keep me in place and distracted. You know, me thinking that I was going to live this way and this was going to be my life, but they never had any intent of, you know, that happening. They just were trying to keep me occupied for a period of time. And I believe this says, okay, the writing's getting more and more illegible, but I'm pretty certain it says Labor Day halftime. And in, in other words, I think that's an image of a football field. So this is not a game, okay? I, I need everybody to understand that this is not a game. The only reason to take a quote-unquote break from my perspective is maybe somebody needs to meet up and negotiate. But even then, it shouldn't matter if I'm working on stuff. Like if you say to me, and I have to get all this psychically anyway, but say you say to me, we want to take a break, okay? We're going to take a break. We're not going to have any activity for a short period of time. It can't be a long period of time. It can only be short because I don't have a long period of time to wait. Um... 
that should not preclude me from making videos or working on this, okay? Unfortunately, it often does because people can't keep their business to them. So they can't keep their minds on their own business. They've got to constantly be bugging me. Um, so that's not fair. If, if we were taking a break, it shouldn't matter what I'm doing in my private world. Um, but none of this is none of this is honest and none of this is up front. Um, this is all just to slow me down. But the, the valid reason would be like you need to have a you know a meeting and a discussion to decide what you're gonna do. But what ends up happening apparently is everybody says, okay, well, here's the status now. How much money are you going to give me to fuck her up this way? How much money are you going to give me to fuck her up that way? What will you do for me if I fuck her up this way? That's what that's what the kind of negotiations, I believe, that are going on. It's not like how are we going to resolve this and how are we going to remedy this or that and make a better world for ourselves. It's how much how much are you going to give me to fuck this up again? That's the kind of negotiations I think are going on in the back. So why why would I sit around and wait for that? This is not being done in good faith. Oh, and during these break, quote unquote, break times, I'm still getting beamed in the head. They're trying to kill me. And the attitude seems to be as long as your mom says it's okay to kill you, it's okay to kill you. As long as all of these exes that came into your life specifically to fuck you up say it's okay to kill you, it's okay to kill you. These people own you, you're a piece of property. If they say it's okay to kill you, it's okay to kill you. That's the attitude. This is all a bunch of, you know, it's all a pack of cards, just like Alice in Wonderland said. It's all a pack of cards. It's a house of cards. And it's a house of cards that's as tall as the twin fucking towers. And that's what I had the sense of. I don't have it now, but when I was asleep in a far more re receptive position, I had a very strong sense of the Twin Towers being behind a lot of this. The attacks on the Twin Towers. Because I think they involved a lot of people who are in government today. And that's the truth. And that's what, you know, that's what maybe the truth that needs to come out. I mean, I kind of feel like if, if I'm being pushed back because too much truth is coming out, that means not enough truth has come out yet. That's how I feel. And we not need to not have another Twin Towers attack or anything like it. And I don't know how that can, you know, I don't know how that can be ensured with this kind of attitude that's going on right now where people are being exploited and murdered for money and treated like they're, you know, a piece of wheat on a field to be harvested.